No matter how many times the experts tell us that risks are minuscule and the rewards substantial, so many Australians are still umming and ahhing about getting a COVID vaccine, and in particular, the AstraZeneca jab. Misinformation, mixed messaging and anxiety are leading to decision paralysis. But waiting is the worst thing we can do. Just do it is no longer an advertising slogan for running shoes. It's now become a mantra all Australians must accept in this desperate race to reclaim our lives. Let's start. Yeah. This should be just about the most exciting time in Ben and Veronica Gibson's lives, lapping up the joy of spending time with their first child, gorgeous little Alana, who recently turned one. Sweet pea, I love my but in reality, it's a pretty monotonous existence at the moment. This, their daily exercise during an otherwise locked down life in Sydney. Your new ish parents. <laughs> yeah. Well, what's the delay in the vaccine rollout actually done to your lives? The only negative would be that, like, we're obviously quite far away from both of our families. So regional New South Wales and Victoria is where our family are based. Um, we haven't been able to see them as much as we would have liked, especially being new time parents where you do lean on support. That family support. So that's probably been the biggest impact for us. And if a vaccine means that we can see our family a bit more, or we can travel a bit more freely, then, um, yeah, we'd happily do it. Deciding on a vaccine, though, is easier said than done. Ben and Veronica aren't anti-vaxxers. They get their flu jab every year. But like so many other sensible Australians, they've been left bamboozled by the mixed messaging from federal and state governments, as well as health experts. With the Delta variant spreading rapidly through parts of Sydney, the couple, aged in their 30s, decided to see their GP about getting the AstraZeneca jab a fortnight ago. But despite their enthusiasm, they were talked out of it. It's been a roller coaster of emotions with, with the mixed messaging. You don't know whether you should get it. And when it's changing constantly, as someone, I'm a very details oriented person. <laughs> so when, when the details are changing, I start to get a bit hesitant about, oh, should I be doing this? Or what's the risk in taking this? Do you think Australia's stuffed this up? Definitely, totally. I think at the moment they have. They've created almost a fear within society itself at the moment of getting vaccinated or not with this particular vaccine um, when it wouldn't have been a second thought for other people. Like, like, like yeah, ourselves. Yeah, for the normal. You just say there's a vaccine available. Go and, and get it. Go and get it. Yeah. Is AstraZeneca safe? AstraZeneca is absolutely safe. What we're talking about with AstraZeneca here is a one in one million risk of death if you get the vaccine. And, and that, in anyone's measure in medicine, is a safe product. Dr Nick Coatesworth was the nation's deputy chief medical officer in the early stages of this pandemic. He's now furious at the fear that's been created around the AstraZeneca vaccine. You and I have spoken quite a few times during this pandemic, but I don't think I've seen you as fired up as you are right now. Oh, no, Tom, I, th I think you're right. I think you're right. And, and I can tell you exactly why. Uh, I, I've been seeing patients in my own clinic who have been eligible to be back vaccinated for quite some time who ha have been hesitant about getting the AstraZeneca vaccine. And uh, I think that that really concerns me. And it, it's really time that the profession, the medical profession, academia, uh, politics, we all got behind uh, these two vaccines that we've got, AstraZeneca and Pfizer, because now, now it really does make a difference. You know, we've got the Delta strain in Sydney and we need to get our communities in Australia vaccinated as quick as possible. Last year, we were begging for a way out of the COVID crisis, and now we have a solution with a vaccine. So why are so many people not taking it up? Much of the hesitancy stems from the constantly changing health advice. In February, AstraZeneca was approved by the Therapeutic Goods Administration for Australians over the age of 18. But the Australian Technical Advisory Group on Immunisation, better known as ATAGI, has since changed its recommendations on who AstraZeneca is safe for on three different occasions. The latest advice is that every adult in Greater Sydney is now encouraged to take that vaccine. Can you understand, with the changing advice from ATAGI on AstraZeneca, why a lot of young people are very confused about whether it is safe or not? 
Of course I can understand that. Of course I can understand. I think that the message for young people was that the ATAGI advice was provided in an environment of COVID zero, of effective elimination. And they then had to balance this really tiny risk of blood clotting in the brain with the fact that really nobody was getting COVID. But there was always the caveat on that, that if there was an outbreak and the risk of your hospitalization or death from COVID-19 went up, then that age recommendation would be changed. The queues at the vaccine hub at Sydney's Olympic Park show there are plenty of people keen to get a vaccine. Well, the Pfizer one at least. On one day here, a couple of weeks ago, they gave out more than 8,000 Pfizer jabs and only 50 doses of AstraZeneca. That's 99.4% of people choosing not to get the AstraZeneca. I wish the term vaccine hesitancy had never come into uh, colloquial use. It's just such a shame and we just need to try and turn that mindset around. Pfizer is considered to be the gold standard in most people's minds. And what do they think AstraZeneca is then? Substandard, doesn't work very well, isn't going to protect them and will probably kill them. None of which are true. So how much of the AstraZeneca vaccine have you got here at the moment? Dr Billy Whiteson is on the front line of the vaccine rollout, a GP who offers both AstraZeneca and Pfizer vaccines at her clinic in Sydney. 400 doses there and there's another 80 here. It's well stocked. Uh, yes. She's seen firsthand how irrational some people have become about vaccine brands. A couple of weeks ago, it turned ugly at her practice when a computer glitch meant some patients were wrongly told they had bookings for Pfizer vaccines and had to be turned away. We had a lot of menacing people shaking their fists at us, getting very upset that we couldn't give them what they wanted. And it was a very frightening experience for us and very concerning for them. So how often are you copying abusive messages? Daily. We don't want to stand up argument with anybody. That's not why we're health professionals. We're here because we want to try and help people one by one. That's what we try and do. This is what happens when people decide not to get vaccinated. We're inside the COVID ward at the UAMS hospital in Little Rock, Arkansas, which is right now busier than at any time during this pandemic. And they're expecting things to get worse here much worse. Everyone in Arkansas has been offered the vaccine for months, but the majority have so far avoided it. Not only do we have the highest rate of infection right now, we have the lowest rate of vaccination. And not coincidentally, the regions that have the highest vaccination rate right now have the lowest infection rate. Dr. Ryan Dare is heartbroken by this new surge of COVID infections that was completely avoidable. America has now largely reopened off the back of a vaccine rollout that's had mixed success. In many states in the Northeast, close to 80% of the population is fully vaccinated. But in the South, it's a very different story. Arkansas is almost the worst, with just 45% of the population here fully vaccinated. And now they're paying the price. How do you feel as a doctor when you see all of these situations that, that could have been avoided? So frustrating. So frustrating. It hurts to see people have to go through this. You know, you don't want people living with regret. It's hard. And it's every day. It's every, every situation. There's heartbreak in it because it's all preventable. You know, nearly 100% preventable. Of the dozens of hospital admissions here with COVID, Dr. Dare tells us he's only met one that's been vaccinated. The rest chose not to get the jab. Kenneth Graham is one of the thousands in Arkansas to have contracted COVID in the last fortnight. A 33-year-old health worker, he says he just never got around to getting vaccinated. Just how frightening has this whole experience been for you? Oh, man, on a scale of one to 10, probably a 20. <laughs> I literally thought I was dying, so I, I, I was delusional too. 
and I kind of uh, scared my parents. I told them uh, I loved them, and I didn't think I was going to make it. <laughs> do you find yourself wishing now that you, you did get the vaccine sooner? Yeah, I, I really do. Uh, I've been telling everybody, uh, if you haven't got it, please get it. Please take it if you can. Tell all your loved ones and everybody that's able to take it to take it. Somebody cares about you, so take it, please. You've seen how bad this virus really is. Yes, yes, yes. Not everybody makes it out, out alive from it. So it's very clear then that the majority of people in Arkansas at the moment have decided they don't want to be vaccinated. The majority, that is true. It's very frustrating. Um, you know, we have, a, we have a cure, essentially. This is as good as it gets. And uh, the undue hesitancy is, is very, very frustrating. From Arkansas to Australia, much of the vaccine hesitancy stems from wild rumours spread online about the dangers of vaccines. But now we can uncover who's behind the misinformation campaigns and how much money they're making in the process. Australia is not the only country where people are taking to the streets outraged about lockdowns, vaccine rollouts and other COVID policies. Across Europe, hundreds of thousands have been protesting as well. There's anxiety around the world as a result of the pandemic. But that's made so much worse by misinformation online that's whipping people into a frenzy. Look, um, misinformation and conspiracy theories, they find, uh, they find root in when people are anxious. And we've seen some people descend in some pretty dark holes of conspiracism and misinformation in the past year and a half. Imran Ahmed is the CEO of the Centre for Countering Digital Hate, which focuses on disrupting misinformation online. And that's never been more prevalent than since the arrival of COVID-19. This is ironically a pandemic of misinformation that, that's, that started in San Francisco, in, in America. But we're also, and we're seeing it spread all across the world because these are really sophisticated people. They're kind of like the Hollywood of lies and misinformation that might actually kill you and the people that you love. Imran's team published a study cited by the White House last month. Their research shows that a staggering 73% of all anti-vaccine content on Facebook stemmed from just 12 people. They're dubbed the disinformation dozen. It contains high profile activists like Robert Kennedy Jr. And this man, Joseph McCullough, who's identified as a chief spreader of coronavirus misinformation online. He's turned fear-mongering into big business, amassing wealth of more than $100 million via an e-commerce empire. A lot of people might say, well, why would these people lie to me that they're trying to enlighten me? But it, it all comes down to dollars and cents. Yeah, these are sophisticated, um, economically motivated. These are, they're, they're in it for the money. They're snake oil salesmen who have become very adept at using social media to build their audiences, but also to drag people into a marketing pathway. They tell them all sorts of lies to draw them in, and then they turn them into cash cows. What's your message to platforms like Facebook? They're killing people. I mean, they really, they are, look, the only pandemic we have is among the unvaccinated. US President Joe Biden has slammed social media platforms for allowing these lies to spread unchecked. But for now, Facebook continues going about business as usual because it's also making money from the controversial posts. How are they allowed to get away with this? The truth is that there is a dirty secret to social media, that it has become not just a place where um, misinformation uh, is spreading with impunity. In fact, Worse still, the algorithms prefer misinformation to information because misinformation is controversial. It's been shoved up in our timelines, which are no longer a list of posts ordered by when they were posted. They're, al they're actually an artificially constructed list of what has the most engagement. And that central fact has changed what we see and when we see it and how we see it. We're now consuming more and more misinformation than ever before. 
one thing that's often talked about in enticing people into misinformation is what's called a confirmation bias. So it's where people perhaps come into their information search with a preconceived idea of, of, of what, they, what they think. And then they look for evidence that, that confirms that belief. And that leads to this self-fulfilling prophecy that, yeah, I, I, I keep going down this particular track. Ben Newell is a professor of cognitive psychology at UNSW. His specialty is figuring out why humans make certain decisions. And while misinformation is certainly one factor when it comes to vaccine hesitancy, for a lot of Australians, it's more about decision paralysis and confusion. Just in the same way that we perhaps overestimate our chances of winning a lottery, we can also overestimate our chances of, of getting side effects. And I think one of the issues with, with the vaccines is that once an emotional reaction comes into play, that kind of uh, probable information, probability information, gets somehow superseded with a possibility. The facts are simple. The chance of blood clots from some contraceptive pills is one in 1,000. In your lifetime, the chance of being hit by a car as a pedestrian is just under one in 600. And the chance of being hit by lightning is about one in 140,000. We barely think twice about any of those, yet the one in a million chance of dying from the AstraZeneca vaccine has so many people in a spin. It's funny, isn't it? Because no one sits down at the dinner table at night and discusses the risks of driving a car and will they do it tomorrow or not? But everyone's having that conversation about the vaccine. Yeah, it's the novelty of it. It's it's and and at the moment it's become crucial to you know our everyday life. I think if it's the fear that's stopping people, then it's a combination of this overestimating low probability events and then the tendency to overweight them in people's decisions. Uh, those two things combined can lead to that that reluctance. Come on. Sydney couple Ben and Veronica Gibson have been weighing up the risks of vaccination and for now have been holding off getting the AstraZeneca jab because of the mixed messaging surrounding its safety. What sort of thing uh, should we start with? In terms of the information around AstraZeneca, what could I help with? Last week, we organised a Zoom chat for them with Dr Nick Coatesworth to discuss any dangers. Um, if the vaccine was always safe, why could we not access it earlier or um, free from a doctor's appointment? or free from signing a waiver. Yeah, so I, I completely get it. The, um, the changing of advice sort of puts a whole heap of uncertainty around it, doesn't it? Yeah. The vaccine, both the vaccines, AstraZeneca and Pfizer, they both got approved by the TGA for people over the age of 18, which means that from a, a medical perspective, they are considered safe. And uh, I guess one way to think about that is there are a lot of things in medicine that we say are safe, but they're not completely without risk. The extra information helped Ben and Veronica decide that they were now willing to roll up their sleeves. And on Thursday, they finally got the AstraZeneca jab. There we go. Simple as that. Yeah. You're vaccinated. Yes, yes we are. <laughs> How's it feel to have it done now? It's kind of a relief, actually. When we first met you, you, you were quite hesitant about things. Yeah. What's turned you around? Um, I think the discussion with Dr Coatesworth was really informative, um, as well as the fact that, um, you know, the cases have obviously gone up quite substantially in New South Wales, so I think if it's a way out, this is a good one. For some Australians, outbreaks have been the hurry-up they needed to finally jolt them into action. In many parts of America, though, the message still isn't getting through. And we have one more treatment option up our sleeve if you got worse. Arkansas doctor Ryan Dare is now overrun by COVID cases who refused to get vaccinated. And he's hoping that Australia learns from his country's complacency. We've lost more Americans than any war. We lost more Americans than World War II. We have to learn from this mistake of not having a heavily enough vaccinated community. Get vaccinated. You know, I tell people, get vaccinated. Everything's a personal choice, but your personal choice affects the people you love. You know, if you got kids, I got a four-year-old, a five-year-old, a seven-year-old. They need a dad. Don't leave your kids without a dad. Don't leave your mom without a daughter. You know, it's essentially a cure.
We have a cure to this world war that we're in. Hello, I'm Tom Steinford. Thanks for watching 60 Minutes Australia. Subscribe to our channel now for brand new stories and exclusive clips every week. And don't miss out on our Extra Minutes segments and full episodes of 60 Minutes on 9now.com.au as well as the 9now app.